Yugita Lemai there in Mumbai. Here in the UK, thousands of cabin crew at British Airways will find out today whether they still have a job. The airline has been locked in a bitter dispute with its staff who face significant pay cuts if they remain. Well, BA reached a deal with its pilots last month. Earlier, my colleague Anita McVeigh spoke to Angela, that's not her real name, who's been cabin crew for British Airways for 25 years. She took voluntary redundancy on Monday because she couldn't bear to be told she didn't have a job anymore. Voluntary redundancy is a very loose term. The word voluntary is very loosely used here. Everybody that I know that pressed that button on Monday loves their job, did not want to go, but felt that they literally had no other choice um, because they would not have been able to survive on the new contract with a 40% cut in their salary. So to say voluntary uh, implies that we had a choice. Um, we didn't feel that we had a choice. We were all desperately upset and sad, as are all the crew. Um, but our enhanced package, this is another term that's used loosely, our enhanced package leave was actually 1.4 times the statutory redundancy. So, you know, enhanced is, is not quite what we were hoping for. Um, but these are the terms that we were given, and uh, this is what we've had to deal with. So when uh, th there have been reports, Angela, talking about different terms and conditions, that's the sort of thing that, that you're uh, alluding to? Yes. I mean, we have not actually been told officially what this new contract will involve. So the entire point of what we're going through is that everything is unknown. We're being asked to leave a job that we love or take the risk of not being selected for the new role um, not taking voluntary redundancy does not guarantee you a place on the new contract. It just means you will be considered for selection. And I know crew who have literally been awake all night because the email started to come through at midnight. They have literally been awake all night waiting to see whether they'll be selected for their own job. And if they are selected, they should be relieved to keep a contract where their salary will go down between 40 and 50 percent. One crew member who's just had to take VR from uh, British Airways, our transport correspondent Tom Burridge is here. It's a very, very tough situation, isn't it, for everyone concerned? But th the level of anger seems pretty unusual. Yeah, really, really unusual. I think, you know, this is as acrimonious and bitter as an industrial dispute gets. I was with staff on Wednesday outside British Airways headquarters near Heathrow as they demonstrated, hundreds of them, and hearing their stories. I mean, these are mainly longer serving members of staff who are going to see a 20% pay cut to their basic salary, but they'll also lose allowances. And in many cases, it means effectively, if they were to remain at the airline, uh, they would see their overall take home pay fall by around 40 to 50%. And these are people with mortgages, with families who are really facing a, a very, very difficult decision. They say they've been boxed into a corner. They have no good option here. One, if they are allowed to stay at the company, remain under much, much reduced terms and conditions and pay, or two, uh, walk out with what most of them feel is, is, is a pittance of, of a redundancy payment. Many thousands have gone for the voluntary redundancy option earlier in the week. And more generally, obviously, the unions very much involved and BA obviously facing massive pressures due to COVID. Yeah, so look, I mean, look, COVID is, is a massive, if, well, it's the factor in all of this, definitely. You know, the pandemic has been forced upon everyone, including British Airways. Airlines are suffering more than any other companies out there, really. And Air, BA is losing, it says, £20 million every single day. I mean, it's, it, the recovery is struggling to take off. If at all, there's the, there's the quarantine measures coming from the UK government, that's hitting it harder as well. There are other factors, though, pushing this as well. I mean, there's no doubt that British Airways is uh, being driven by competitive pressure from low-cost airlines as well. On its short-haul routes, it's got to compete with the likes of EasyJet, Ryanair. Historically, they've paid their staff much, much less, or their cabin crew staff at least. And therefore, there are those other factors too. BA, though, says it has to make radical changes if it is to survive. Other companies might be looking at this thinking, you know, could this be a model for us? Other employees and other companies also worrying, looking at how one industry has really suffered. You know, I think I think that well, there, I think there is, there'll be similarities with certain industries. I mean, look, the travel sector is, is exceptional, mm. given the the, the 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 fact that the pandemic shut it down for months, and really. 
things are beginning to move a bit again. People are going on some holidays. But look, think about business travel. Who do you know going on a business trip right now? No one. And that is the reality for an airline like BA. I mean, transatlantic flights to the, to the likes of New York were a massive moneymaker for BA. And, and one of the arguments, I think, from BA staff is, look, British Airways and its parent group, International Airlines Group, IAG, was, before COVID, making huge profits. And they say they drove those profits. They were integral to that. They were the staff members who gave 20, 30 years of, of service towards the airline. And now they feel like they're being hung out to dry. But BA is saying, look, this has turned everything upside down. It's a new reality. The recovery won't be quick. And we have no option. Tom Burridge, thanks very much indeed.